Welcome to the Receptive Impact Podcast. I'm your host, Nina Elise. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to today's episode. So I have got a fun episode planned, well, topic planned um, to discuss, and it may be a little controversial or may cause you to be like, what the hell? Are you okay, Nina? Is this how you're truly living your life? And you can think whatever you want, but this is a concept that I have been actually exploring for the last, I would say, three or four years. And so it's something that I feel comfortable uh, talking about and sharing because I have played around with this idea and this concept. And what that is, is what if life was a video game? I know that sounds maybe out there for some people, but For me, I completely love the idea of this. And when this concept was first introduced to me, at first I was like, wait, how is that true? And I think at the time I was so disempowered and had given so much of my power away to so many external things that I didn't truly believe that I could be a you know, a character in a video game that was actually creating my reality. And, and and when I say creating my reality as a video game character, it's like, you know, whatever is going on internally is going to be reflected in your external reality. And it was like, at that time, it was a hard concept for me to understand because I was like, well, what do you mean I'm causing this in the collective? And I'm ca- there's these wars and there's this and there's these shitty presidents and this is going on. And it's like, what do you mean? That's my fault. That's my responsibility. And I think that's like a really difficult thing for people to come to terms with, to understand that like everything that is going on internally, every belief system, like every idea, like your self-worth and like just inner conflicts that you're judging and all the shadow aspects of yourself that is being reflected back to you in the external world. And the external world will continue to have that control over you if you think that it is something that is separate than you and it's really not. And when you start to explore the the possibility of this being a potential truth, it can just completely radically change how you approach life. And so when I first learned about this this concept, I was like, oh yeah, haha, this is so funny. Like, yeah, what if this is true? And then over time, the more that I explored plant medicines and different modalities and tools that kind of took me into this other dimension and like really expanded my, my consciousness and helped shift the way that I perceived the world. It was something that became more easily acceptable for me. And so I think it was in like 2020 or no 2021 where something happened and I like completely shattered like what I thought was reality because I had put so much emotion and stake in something happening. And then when it didn't, it like shook me to my core. And I like literally walked around in a daze for like a week or two being like, how is this not true? How did, how come I invested all of this, all of my energy and time into this? And it wasn't true. And at the time I didn't understand or realize, but it was because I was basically putting my power outside of me and saying that, oh, this event happened when you know, and it didn't make sense to me, but it was something within myself that needed, like it needed to happen in the way that it did for me to start to question, like how I was viewing reality, how I was showing up from reality, what I was giving my attention to, what I was giving my power away from. And in the years following that, it became more of like, okay, well, what if this is a video game? And instead of being fearful of that, I started to kind of explore that with neutrality, without any emotions attached to that. And just say, what if this is a possibility? And so, you know, as time went by, it's like, you know, I would be driving down the road and I would look outside and there'd be like a person walking down the street and I'd be like, huh, well, that's just like a a non-player character that's just in my game. And it's almost like this Truman Show type mentality. It's like, oh, that person's just a, a background character in my game. And I put him there to fill the space and, um, to be a part of my backdrop. And when you start to look at it from that perspective, it's like really funny because you're like, wow, these are some really interesting characters that I'm, that I'm putting here. And sometimes I'll, I'll see like glitches in the matrix or glitches in the video game where I'm like, you know, I live in Florida and it'll be 90 degrees outside and there'll be, um, you know, I'll be driving down the road in the, in the, in the middle of like a place where there's like no establishments, nothing. There's a guy in a business suit that's barefoot, that's walking, just randomly walking in the 90 degree heat. And I'm like, who put you there? I put you there. And then you just kind of like laugh about it. 
<laughs> so if you're like totally lost and you're like, you know, what the hell, like what is going on in your mind all the time? Well, this is it. This is how, how I have kind of like shifted my idea of like how reality really works. And there's so much out there from a quantum physics perspective that actually really validates the potentiality of this, this idea. Um, because when you go into this quantum space, if you're familiar with like Joe Dispenza and how you can go into these meditations and reach these states where you come to like basically a place of nothingness. And from there you can kind of shorten the timeline of what you're imagining and trying to do and, um, create that reality from that space. And I think that is something that we have forgotten or that we're not aware that we can do because we are putting our power outside of ourselves and blaming everything outside of ourselves for how our reality is. When in reality, we actually need to go inward and we need to look at those shadows and we need to take ownership of the external reality because that is what we are creating. So if you stick with me here and you're opening up to the idea that, hey, what if life was a video game? Not that there's like some someone holding a controller outside of here, outside of earth and space or something that's like, you know, saying move this foot and then move this foot. It's like, no, we're just like consciousness in this body and we have chosen this character and we can literally be whoever we want, whatever we want. And there's no good or bad. There's just complete neutrality to everything and everything in our lives is neutral and it only is what it is because we give meaning to it. And I think that's a really difficult concept for people to understand or to grasp because it takes away from the meaning of life and it takes away from our addiction to these highs and these lows of emotions and it takes away like the meaning that we give to something. And if we don't have meaning or we don't have purpose in our life, then what is left? And I think that is a very difficult place for people to be in because when you come to that, that point zero, that place of nothingness, it's terrifying. And it's also terrifying to look at the parts of yourself that we previously judged as like shadows or dark aspects of ourselves. And when we start to really explore that inner world and we start to grasp this concept of like our external world is a reflection of our inner world, we go deeper and deeper into that and we start to take on more responsibility for who we are and how we are showing up in life. And we start to realize like, how important it is to be intentional in the way that we show up, in the way that we create our lives. And I reached that point earlier this year. I basically went through like this, I call it a spiritual awakening last year, but basically it was like I was slapped in the face all at once with every single shadow, everything I ever did wrong, how I hurt people, and like had to take radical responsibility for like everything in my life. And basically was like living at my my dad's house for a couple of months, like really just learning like integrating all of that and like sitting with all of that and coming to terms with it and being like, okay, like once you face all of that stuff and you're like, okay, I'm taking responsibility for my life. It's almost like you have this blank slate in front of you when everything around you has crumbled and all the meaning has like gone to the ground and you've let, let go of things and you have faced your biggest fears. It's like, what are you left with when you have faced highs and lows in your life and you're just like, okay, well, what's next? And you start to take radical responsibility and step more into that sovereignty of like, okay, I'm in a video game and I'm the main character. What is it that I want to create? Like, how do I even do that? And it starts with getting like very radically honest with yourself about like, why do I do the things that I do? Why am I choosing to go hang out with Susie instead of this person over here. It's because there's like an attraction to them in some way energetically, and maybe there's karma you need to work out or whatever, but it's kind of exploring that and saying, okay, I'm going to go and spend time with this person. I'm going to cultivate this. And when I give my attention to this person, that's, that's where I'm going to be operating vibrationally. And this is the path that my life is going to go down. Well, if you don't like the path that your life is going on, that is when you need to just bring everything back in and you need to come back to ground zero and say, okay, I want to start over and I want to create something different in my life. And when you look at yourself from that perspective as like you have a blank slate, you yourself are a blank slate, you are a video game character that you can build and you can add different accessories to and you can be different personalities. And it's like, you know, Ram Dass talks about like he's in this meat suit and he's talked about in his book about you know, like he showed up as a character because he put on this clothes and he put on a business suit. So he was a businessman and that was the character that he was for that day. And then the next day he showed up somewhere else and he was in his 
full-on like meditation garb and that was like the character that he showed up as in in that moment in that day and it's like so freeing and like really funny at the end of the day when you think about it because we're all just actors in this video game and we can be whoever we want and some people may struggle with that concept or that idea but it's not just like, oh, I'm going to snap my fingers and I'm going to be that person. Like, I think when you get to a certain level in this like video game that it becomes easier and easier for you to step more into different characters. But when you first start out, you're like, where do I even start? How do I even do this? It's like, okay, like how do I want my external reality look like? And yeah, you can say like, oh, I want to live in a mansion and I want to do this and I want to have 10 babies and be a billionaire or whatever it is. And that's all fun and great. And that's definitely an experience to have. For me personally, it was like, okay, well, but why do I want those things? Am I really at ground zero if I have these underlying wants and needs for these external things? And when I went through this like spiritual awakening over the past year, basically like everything crumbled to the ground for me where I had nothing left. Everything I loved, everything I thought I loved, I didn't have anywhere to live. I didn't have a job. I, I had lost like my best friend and like one of the most important relationships in my life had just completely crumbled to the ground and it left me like questioning everything for the past seven years of my life. And it was like after the crumbling of that relationship and, and not having anything else, it was like, okay, well, what is it that I truly want? Like if I had all these things and now I don't have them and I'm in this place and I learned how to be okay with being in that like place where you know, I basically had nothing or my ego thought I had nothing. And so it became less of a place that I was afraid of and more of like a a place of curiosity to be in. And so when I reached that, that place, it was easier for me to be like, okay, like I'm going to question what I truly want and what I truly, you know, want to experience in life. And there are so many different ways that you can approach this. If you are looking at your life as a video game, like you can look at your life as this blank slate and you have like, you know, this huge controller in front of you. And you're like, if I push this button in combination with this button and turn it just slightly here, it's going to set me on this, this timeline and this path. And when you realize that like what you put your focus and your attention on and how you're showing up in your life and the decisions that you're making can put you on a different timeline and there are an infinite amount of timelines and that can feel very overwhelming. It can feel scary because that's a lot of responsibility to put on yourself to create this reality. But it's also incredibly liberating because it does, it puts the power in your hands and you can choose to go down this life. You can choose to sit here and be a happy Buddha on a rock and do that. Like there's literally no right or wrong. And so when we take, again, take away the emotions and how we think things should be, because that's ultimately driven by our conditioning and by external forces that have created belief systems within us, we can start to create from a more pure place and we can actually have fun with it and not take things so seriously. And life can be so much more joyful. And again, this isn't something that you know necessarily happens overnight, but it is something that you can sit with and, and become more comfortable with over time. So as like the main character in your game, whether you're coming from conditioned beliefs or you're coming from like a place of purification where you're like, okay, I have no wants or needs. So then how am I really going to live my life? What choices am I going to make today? It becomes more of a game. It literally becomes a game for you. And it takes away the seriousness of things because if everyone around you is just a player in your game and the importance or lack of importance that and the meaning that you give to a person, that is how they're going to show up in your reality. So it's like, you cannot blame anyone for anything. Like you are just taking full responsibility for everything in your life. Even the people that are around you, because they are just reflecting back what is inside of you. And you have chosen for them to show up in your video game based on what's happening internally which is like the biggest joke ever to me and just makes me laugh because when I get caught up and like kind of like fall asleep in the video game where I'm like, oh, this person did this. And I'm like, come on, Nina. And then I go and I sit with myself and I say, okay, what is this fear that's inside of me? Or where am I projecting this onto this person? And it's just like this constantly like peeling back layers to purify yourself so that you can come from a place of authenticity to build out your, your video game. And so there's a lot of trial and erroring when you get to this like ground zero place where you're like, okay, what controller am I going to turn today? 
And so my process with, with all of this was once I kind of got to that place and I was like, okay, well, I can just start with anything at this point. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, what things do I do that bring me joy inside that aren't based on external validation or anything external or things from my past or whatever. And it was like, I picked simple things like, you know, I love the ocean. So I started working with nonprofits in the area that had to do with helping the ecosystem and sea turtles and um, like doing beach cleanups and stuff. And I like really enjoyed doing that and giving my time towards that because I really love the ocean. I love being around it. It's like my favorite place to be in the world. And I love the town that I live in. And so that was like kind of a pillar that I built for myself of like, okay, this is where I'm going to be intentional with my time and my energy. And another thing was learning Spanish. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to be intentional with my time and the way that I, you know, put my attention. And so, you know, I take a Spanish class every week and I study every single day and I practice with people and I practice with friends and it's something that is fun and it's challenging, but it's something that I'm deciding and choosing to be consistent with because my long-term goal is based off of like, I just want to know another language. I want to be able to travel. And, and at the core of it, intuitively, I feel like this is something that is going to be very beneficial for me. And from a philanthropic standpoint of how I'm going to be interacting and working with people in the future. So this is something that I'm dedicating my time and my energy to. And so there are a couple other pillars that I have that I put my time and attention to. And I was just like, you know what? These can shift and these can change, change over time. And I took that pressure off of being like, this is my life goal now. And these are the things that I need to put my attention on and be so serious with. And it, it was just more like, okay, I'm going to go explore this and see how this feels and if I have fun with this. And as I'm going through this journey of like doing my inner work and peeling back all of these layers those things, some of those things are falling away. Some of my goals are falling away. And I'm like, oh, maybe that's just not the direction I'm going to go in. But I had to set that as a goal in order to go do things in order to meet certain people that were going to guide me to something else, which has happened in the process. And so you learn how to trust the unknown and the uncertainty without like attaching any meaning to it or attaching like your joy or your happiness to anything external and saying, this is how it has to be. And just trust that you're always being guided to something bigger without taking any of it seriously, because it's all about having the experience and what you're here to learn and what you're here to learn about yourself. And if you think about from like a video game perspective, that is how, how it goes. As you go through the game, you have these challenges where you get to proceed to the next level, but it's not an easy thing. Like you've got to explore the video game. You've got to learn different things about yourself. You get to unlock superpowers and then you go and you fight some like crazy demon in order to go to the next level and advance to the next floor of the castle and to explore different things. And so when you look at that um, from the perspective of like, this is how our life is, to me personally, it just makes so much sense. And so the more that I explore this, the more that I'm like, holy shit, like this is actually so much fun. And it takes away the seriousness of life. And some people might be like, oh, this is completely delusional. Or you're like living in this fantasy world. And it's like, am I, am I really living in this fantasy world? Um, like, you know, how are you living your life? Are you going to your nine to five job that is sucking your soul and you hate it. And you are constantly complaining about how your health doesn't feel good and how you're not making enough money because you're blaming your, your employer for making you miserable. When in reality, you're just completely disempowering yourself and you're putting your happiness in the hands of other people and not taking responsibility and taking action to do something different with your own life. And that is where I feel like the, the concept of living life in a video game really comes into play because it puts the power back into your hands to do something different. And I'm going to tell you, it is not easy. Like, especially at first over time, it does get easier because, you know, you have to shed all of these old paradigms and all these old ideas and belief systems about how reality actually works. And when you start to shift that and you start to put the power back into your hands, there's going to be that time period where you're like, is this right? Is this working? Can I trust this? Can I trust myself? And you just experiment and you feel like some days you're going two steps back, even though you've, you know, put one step forward and it can just feel like you're completely lost or you're losing your mind. But in reality, you're just completely crumbling all of these old belief systems and you're teaching yourself to create a reality 
that is fun for you that you get to explore. So if you think about it, it's like you were just plopped down on this earth at birth with no conditioning, nothing. And then over the years, you were just conditioned and programmed by external things outside of you. And then it's like you reach this point where you're like, wait, I don't think this is how I want to live my life. I don't have to be, you know, controlled by other people because in reality, you're never controlled by any people. It's just you become aware of the fact that you are allowing yourself to um, stay small and be in a place of disempowerment by placing blame on everything external. And so that is my journey with (laughs) this idea of what if life was a video game because even though it sounds to some people maybe like this crazy concept, there's so much happening right now that people are looking at and they're like, hey, there's aliens. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know there's aliens. Or like these totally out there things are happening and people are calling them like glitches in the matrix or, you know, whatever. And it's like, you're starting to see that things really aren't the way that we thought they were. It's literally like waking up in the Truman Show and being like, oh my God, I'm Jim Carrey. Like, (laughs) this is, my reality is not what I thought it was. And then you get to change the narrative. You get to to do something different, but it is, it is a process because you might literally lose your mind if it goes too fast. And so you need to trust the process of deconstructing everything that you thought that you knew and then coming to that ground zero and then rebuilding it. And that can take years and that's okay. But that is like, you know, we came here to experience like a multitude of different things. And in that time period, you can decide to be a circus performer. And then once you've had that experience, you can be like, Hmm, you know what? I think I'm ex- I want to go be an author and I'm going to go write a book. And so you figure out and you break some codes and, and figure out how to become an author. And so you go down that path. And when you have, you have this, um, belief system that you are the creator of your reality and that you actually can do these things, it becomes easier and easier to step into these different characters and to be these different things in life and to experience different things. And, If that isn't a video game, I don't know what is. (laughs) So that is what I have to say about life being a video game. And I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. Um, I would love to hear from all of you. So feel free to send me a note at hello at nina-elise.com or you can reach out to me on my website at nina-elise.com. If you love this website or this episode and... um, you felt like something stuck with you, feel free to share it with your friends or your family um, or leave a review if you haven't already just sharing like maybe something that really stuck with you or kind of shifted your belief system or caused you to think about things in a different way. It really helps to boost my podcast so that other people can um, have more access to seeing this and listening to to my episodes. And it really means a lot to me if, if you guys go out and do that. I really appreciate your time and um, sitting here and listening to me talk for, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes. I know your, your time is very precious because we are all bombarded with a lot of things in our lives, but I hope that this episode has been helpful and, you know, maybe even just planting a seed or seeing your reality, your life in a different way or a different perspective that you haven't before. So again, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.